I'm Jenna with Refurbished at Nap Time, and today I'm going to show you how I add gold leafing to molds and edges around this simple little wall hanger. I started with this plaque that I purchased from the dollar store. It's just a little pressed wood plaque that's plain, and I thought I'm going to dress it up with some Would You Been moldings, some I Love Hue paint in their new color, as well as some gold leafing. I start by applying heat with my heat gun to the back of my widget bins. This isn't always necessary, but I wanted to be sure that I was going to have a flat surface on the back as I am applying it to a flat surface as well. Once the backs are spongy, they're good to go. That makes them formable so that you can press down really well without cracking the molds. I'm using Gorilla Glue and just applying a thin layer on. I don't go too heavy with my layers because I don't like a bunch of glue to press out and as you press down it does spread around on the mold. So I had just enough that not an excess amount came out. I then press it down. It's still pliable as long as it's still soft so you can move it around if it doesn't go exactly where you need it to. I just kind of moved a little bit of the mold down some. Once it's pressed on then um, I'll allow it to sit and let the glue dry. Now I'm using Dusty Desert Pink. This is a new color from I Love Hue. It's part of the Renewed Spirit Collection. It's a really pretty rose color um, that I just kind of call like a dusty rose almost. Um, it's got hints of pink to it, a little bit of a coral shade. It's a very pretty color. And I'm just doing a quick coat across the entire piece. I do apply two coats to this um, so that it's even. When I'm working around my molds, I always like to use, of course, an artist's brush. This allows me to get in really well to all of those grooves. The details on Would You Been Moldings are phenomenal. I mean, you can make out every little sprig of hair almost on these uh, little cherub. I'm just gonna continue working in all of those grooves. For this particular part, I'm not as concerned of painting one direction. Um, and like I said, this is just a quick little project so that I can show off how to do some gold leaving and to show off this new color. But typically, you know, when you're working around your molds, you can't just go one direction. You've really got to get in there. So when I do my second coat, um, it will have a much better even layer down and, and it'll all go the same direction. That's why when I do my first coat, I really make sure that I fill all in under those spaces. After this layer dries, I'll go ahead and apply the second layer and pre-cut my designs for my transfers. I'll be using Tulip Fields from HP Distribution LLC. This is a Hocus Pocus transfer. I had pre-cut just two sections of this very large transfer so that I could have a little bit at the bottom just to make it a little bit more floral. I'm using my transfer tool after pressing it down onto the wood and then just applying pressure over that clear backing to help the transfer release onto the painted piece. I work my way around it Slowly peeling up as I go, if I find a section that doesn't apply properly, I can just lay the clear piece back down and start applying pressure again. If for any reason you happen to pull up your piece, the entire white backing piece, and you realize you left part of your transfer on it, you can always lay it back down and just press it back into the same spot that it should have gone into. It's not a big deal if you accidentally pull up your piece you want to be sure to round off your edges as well, that way you know the entire section has it eared properly. Then you'll press down with your hand gently to just smooth the transfer down to be sure there's no air bubbles. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply the second piece that I pre-cut. Again, you'll press down with your clear backing still on so that your transfer adheres to the paint. Once you've applied the entire piece and pulled it back, you can then release the clear backing and you're good to go. I did clear coat this in two coats of I Love Hue flat before applying my glue for my gold leafing. I'm using Mona Lisa's gold leaf adhere glue. 
and just a cheap little Crayola brush you can find at the dollar store as well. And I'm barely putting any of the gold leaf glue onto my brush and I'm just lightly applying it where I want it to go on the molds. You can apply as much as you want or as little as you want. Remember how much glue you apply is how much gold leafing you're going to have um, because it sticks to wherever you have applied that glue. And I'm going around the edges with the glue as well. I'm just kind of tapping it on there, creating a just a random design, no even amount of glue. And I just went all the way around the edges just to create an extra little bit of effect. Also to show how you can do gold leafing on edges versus how you do them on the molds. You'll want to feel your glue to ensure that it has become tacky. You don't want it still wet, but you don't want it dry before you start to apply your gold leafing. I'm now gonna start to apply the gold leafing sheets. These are sheets that I've purchased off of Amazon. You get 100 in a pack. Some of these are just leftover pieces that I'm using first. And I'm using a little sponge brush to apply my gold leaf on. You don't want anything abrasive as gold leaf is extremely thin and it will easily tear. So by just pressing the gold leaf sheet onto the mold, I then take my sponge brush and just lightly press it into the mold. This allows it to get into all the grooves and isn't just sitting on the top. You can see I use my finger to just lightly press it down I'm taking little scrap pieces to fill in, and then I just press down with my sponge brush. And I'm just gonna continue on with little scraps that I have applying to the edges. If you'd like a smooth look to your gold leafing, the best thing you can do is apply in sheets, and you wanna make sure that they are flat, they are not crinkled, that you have every little bit of space covered with that glue to ensure that perfect flat gold leaf look. I can never get that perfect, so for me, I'm okay with pieces that have, you know, a bit of the torn leaf, the distressed look to it. Um, and that's kind of what you're gonna get here. Now, once I've applied my gold leaf, I take my same brush and I just go back and lightly brush it off. You know, you'll see scraps that fall down. This is a very messy art and it flies everywhere. The little bit of air that comes out of your ceiling, you know, it's gonna make your gold leaf just go all over the place. So be prepared, you're gonna have to clean up a mess. Um, it's inevitable. And here I'm just gonna take some scraps from a piece and continue to apply around the edges. And then once I have all the area of glue covered with pieces of the gold leaf, I'm gonna just take my sponge brush and go back and brush it off. And it's very simple to brush off because it will only stick to where you applied glue. And if there wasn't enough glue, then it won't stick, but it's very simple to go back and fill in. You just put a little tiny bit of glue to where you needed it to fill in and then wait for it to become tacky and then just put it on and brush it right back off. The best way I can tell you to clean up some gold leaf is with a handheld vacuum. It is wonderful for cleaning up gold leaf so that it does not make a massive mess. Don't be afraid of using those scrap pieces. They're great for filling in sections where you might have missed or if you want this distressed look. You definitely don't need to use a brand new piece every time. You just wanna ensure that you don't have any kind of dirt on your gold leaf as you apply it because that will stick as well. Once I'm finished, I will clear coat to seal the gold leafing so it does not tarnish over time. And this is always recommended as it will turn brown. I completed this by adding a small strand of gold beads to the back so that it could hang if I wanted it to. 
You can find Refurbished at Naptime at refurbishedatnaptime.com, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, as well as subscribing to this YouTube channel.